Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrek. The first deputy chairman of the Supreme Council of Youth and Sports, president of the General Sports Authority, the GSA, and president of Bahrain Olympics Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received today at his office in Al Wadi Palace the chairman of Bahrain Tennis Federation, Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Mbarak Al Khalifa, the chairman of Bahrain Air Sports Federation, Sheikh Salman bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, and the deputy chairman of the Bahrain Billiard, Snooker, and Darts Federation, Mundir Jawas Al Basri. The meeting was attended by Deputy President of the GSA, His Highness Sheikh Salman bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, and the CEO of GSA, Dr. Abdurrahman Askar. The meeting comes in line with His Highness's keenness on supporting sports federations to further develop the performance of national players. His Highness welcomed the attendees, expressing his appreciation for the efforts exerted by their federations to further develop sports in the kingdom. His Highness then reviewed the future programs and plans of the federations, affirming the importance of intensifying efforts and establishing strong national teams. For their part, the guests expressed their thanks and appreciation to His Highness, affirming that his support will positively reflect on the efforts to develop the sports system in the kingdom. First Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council of Youth and Sports, President of the General Sports Authority and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received the head of the Bahrain Cycling Association, Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the head of Bahrain Badminton and Squash Federation, Dr. Sousan Hajji, the head of the Bahrain Triathlon Association, Abdullah Abdurrahim, in the presence of Deputy President of the GSA, His Highness Sheikh Salman bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, and the CEO of the GSA, Dr. Abdurrahman Askar. This reception comes under the framework of His Highness's keenness to support the federations and associations in order to make further accomplishments. His Highness praised their efforts in elevating the sports sector in the kingdom that lead to achieving positive results. His Highness was then briefed on the plans and programs to be implemented and stressed the need to exert further efforts to achieve more successes. The guests expressed their thanks and appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Khalid and affirmed that his support will contribute to more accomplishments. They affirmed their keenness to continue the efforts in line with the policies of the GSA to elevate the sports sector in the Kingdom of Bahrain. The Minister of Education, Dr. Majid Naimi, affirmed that the ministry implemented 57 training programs in June and July that benefited 3,231 trainees. He added that three programs have been implemented within the project to develop the quality of school performance, benefiting 316 trainees with the aim to continue spreading the culture and concepts of quality of school performance according to approved standards and the effective use of technology in teaching, learning, and evaluating students' performance. The Minister pointed out that the ministry continued its training support in private educational institutions as it implemented three training programs for kindergarten affiliates in addition to four training programs that were implemented in cooperation with the Arab Bureau of Education for the Gulf States and the Educational Center for the Arab Language. The Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, affirmed the Kingdom's keenness to further enhance the financial and economic performance in order to achieve the best results for the country and its people. He praised the efforts of Team Bahrain that contributed to enhancing the national economy as well as achieving further advancements and achievements for the Kingdom in order to achieve the desired goals. 
The Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority, BTEA, announced a new program aimed towards supporting the local tourism industry by incentivizing travel and tour operations to attract inbound tourism into the kingdom. The announcement was made during a virtual meeting held today between BTEA and a number of local destination management companies in order to boost the tourism potential of Bahrain. To speak more about this, we are joined on the phone by BTEA's Marketing and Promotions Director, Ms. Mariam Turani. Hello, Ms. Mariam. Hello, good evening. Thank you for being with us. Can you please tell us about the new incentive program to further support tourism and travel agencies here in the kingdom? Absolutely. Thank you very much for having me. Um, we are very excited to have launched the Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority's new inbound travel incentive program. Uh, this will be one of many initiatives we plan on launching over the next coming year. Uh, this particular one we are quite excited about because it's being launched at an opportune time where we are finally seeing markets open up after a year and a half of inactivity. Um, people are, as you can see, starting to be more comfortable with traveling. So this new initiative will support the recovery of the sector and reinvigorate tourism in Bahrain. Amazing. We have a couple of uh, objectives mm -hmm. uh, with this initiative. We want to reach with this program, but mainly our focus is to support local travel uh, uh, operators as well as through this program increase the number of tourists that visit Bahrain. Yes. yes. These plans are uh, coming up and uh, more so happening in Bahrain. And that was the BTEA's Marketing and Promotions Director, Ms. Maryam Turani. Thank you for being with us. The digital transformation program and ICT projects in the Kingdom of Bahrain have made great leaps over the past years. As these projects enjoy continuous government support with the aim of activating technical initiatives and implementing strategies for digital transformation. A report monitoring the performance of e-government channels revealed that electronic financial payments through various channels broke the barrier of 200 million dinars during the first half of this year, achieving an important leap and exceptional growth. The number of financial transactions completed through various electronic channels during the first half of this year exceeded 1.6 million transactions, which is double the number recorded in the first half of the last year, in a clear indication of confidence in the quality of the services provided in accordance with the latest technologies and making them a basic building block that contributes to improving the level of government performance. The National Medical Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus has approved the booster vaccination for those aged 60 and above and the immunocompromised who have been fully vaccinated for six months with the Pfizer BioNTech and AstraZeneca COVID Shield. Those who qualify for the booster dose can choose to take the Pfizer BioNTech vaccination or take the same type of vaccination that they took for the first time and second doses as a booster dose. The recommendation has been made in response to a decision issued by the Government Executive Committee following a lengthy study that confirms that the booster shots maximize individuals' immunity against COVID-19, which in return lowers the risk of complications from severe illness and death. The task force stated that starting from October 1, 2021, the vaccination status of individuals eligible for a booster shot will change on the Be Aware Bahrain application from the Green Shield to the Yellow Shield until they opt to receive a booster dose. The opening of registration for the booster dose will be announced in due course, at which time eligible individuals will be able to arrange for an appointment through healthcare or healthalert.gov.ph or the Be Aware Bahrain application. Vaccination protocols have evolved to maximize protection against the virus. However, precautionary measures must be maintained. The National Medical Task Force also announced the Vaccination Committee's approval of the vaccination of children aged 3 until 11 years old, suffering from uh, comorbidities and low immunity with the Sinopharm vaccine. The decision taken to safeguard public health is based on a study that reviewed COVID-19 symptoms in patients suffering from diseases that cause weak immunity, including respiratory illnesses, heart disease, diabetes, cancers, Down syndrome, birth defects and obesity. The task force further noted that vaccination committee's approval of the Sinopharm vaccine for those aged 12 until 17 years, in addition to the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine, 
The task force stressed that the importance of ensuring eligible children receive a vaccine to safeguard public health, adding that the incubation period for the virus in this age group without symptoms extends to up to four days, which may increase the spread of the virus. The task force highlighted that vaccination registration for those 3 until 17 years of age will be available on the Ministry of Health's website, healthalert.gov.bh, via the Be Aware application by selecting Registration. In the interest of the National Space Science Authority to meet the requirements of all national authorities by making use of space data and exploiting space science applications and those related to high accuracy as spatial engineering applications, the authority implemented its first project dedicated to increasing the accuracy of space information bases available to it from various global sources by linking it to the National Spatial Coordinates Network. To speak more about this, we are joined on the phone by engineer Munira Al-Malki from the NSSA. Hello, Ms. Munira. Hello. First of all, on behalf of the National Space Science Agency, I would like to thank Bahrain TV International for this invitation to talk about enhancing and increasing the level of uh, posi uh, position accuracy of satellite data and imagery. That's great. Um, uh, Ms. Uh, Engineer Munira, can you tell us about the significance of further improving NSSA's uh, levels and enhancing the accuracy of collecting this data? Sure. Um, basically, the significance of uh, further um, improving the National Space Science Agency satellite imagery and data was a goal that comes from the beginning and now successfully implemented at the National Space Science Agency lab. Uh, it was established in line with data collection initiatives to manage, handle, and uh, as well promote geospatial space applications that can transform raw space data and images into a value-added services or products that maximize the benefits of investing in space technology and feeds directly to the Kindle's national projects. Mm -hmm. So basically, a uh, collection of well-distributed uh, ground control points among the Kingdom was collected using real-time uh, kinematic uh, position rover. The National Space Science Agency lab team had successfully captured a total of uh, 400 coordinate points that was distributed over around 102 locations in the kingdom. As the ground control points were a major aid in terms of ground truthing to enhance and improve the satellite imagery and data. Um, uh, the process, let's say, the process of enha enhancing the satellite imagery requires dealing with core and complex satellite data. But since the uh, National Space Science Agency invests uh, in capacity building in the field of space science and its technology, the lab team is professionally trained to deal with such data and also collaborate the ground control points within it. So basically to illustrate furthermore, basically to integrate both the space and ground data and further analyze them to produce a study of enhancing the satellite imagery by utilizing obviously from international uh, positional accuracy standards for digital geospatial data. In addition, absolute accuracy was considered strictly as a measure that accounts for all systematics and random errors in a data set. Uh, the result was the level of accuracy between the longitude increased by 83% and between the latitude by 93%. And this percentage uh, corresponds to studies prepared according to uh, accuracy standards for di digital geospatial data. And this is considered among the achievements of the first goals to enhance the satellite imagery and data. Uh, lastly, uh, the significance of this results of this project will be directly reflected on several applications in the domain of uh, space science, remote sensing, and geographical information systems that will benefit the national requirements project in a diverse uh, field, such as agriculture, renewable energy, or even oil and gas. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much for elaborating on yet another achievement of the Kingdom of Bahrain. That was NSSA engineer Ms. Munira Al-Malki. Thank you for being with us. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 1,127,298 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 1,072,508 had taken the second, and 230,176 had taken the booster dose. The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. 
The Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 1,110, with 109 recoveries and 106 registered new cases. 37 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 54 are contacts of active cases, and 15 are travel-related. The Ministry urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus.